Hi, I'm Kirsty Muir, um, I'm from Aberdeen and I'm a skier on the GB team. Um, I'm from Edinburgh and I'm a member of the Scottish Youth Parliament. Hi, um, I'm Claire, I'm from Motherwell and I used to be a member of the Scottish Youth Parliament. I'm Anna Porteous, I live in Coatbridge in North Lanarkshire and I'm also a member of the Scottish Youth Parliament. So the one thing we all have in common for sure is Duke of Edinburgh. Like I've done bronze and silver. I mean I've only done the bronze um, but it was a great experience. I'm just starting my silver right now. I didn't actually do the bronze though. Um, I've done my bronze, silver and my gold. Gold was... Oh, it was... There's no words to describe it. It was like one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had. And obviously, so I'd done it in August, just there. Um, so kind of still pandemic uh, the rules were still in place so it was a bit different it was um obviously your like your five days for gold but I'd done two extra days so combined it into a week um but the two extra days were just like a practice day so we've done the practice and the qualifying together um because I'd done a few practice before that but it was it was a long long week um but just the atmosphere the the teamwork the the views, even the campsite, just absolutely everything. Like, there's not an experience to definitely compare it to that I've ever experienced before. And if you get to do it at some point, I would highly recommend it. Which of the levels did you enjoy the most? It was everything. I think bronze, you kind of used it. It's a really, it's a big difference. It's experience. Silver, it was really good. I still done that through the um, pandemic, so it was kind of more the day walks and everything but the gold I think it was because the team was great you got to camp and it was just it was just everything I think and I think it was because we hadn't maybe done a lot of Duke Edinburgh stuff before it and it's been so long so we finally managed to get it to it but I would honestly would definitely say gold. So obviously with the Duke of Edinburgh there is like quite a lot of time dedication I guess and we're all students and busy as it is and of course you've got everything else with your sports and stuff so how would you say you manage your time or do you ever feel like overwhelmed with the amount you're doing? Um, well it was it was um, I did it uh, it was before my exams um, I, I actually did it so it, my time was a bit better to manage um, and I um, it I did skiing volunteering so when I, I skied and I coach down at the dry slope as my volunteering and I did skiing as my physical and um, so it's, those were easy to incorporate and um, so then it was just the skill which I was doing drumming so even when I was away for a week trick out trip I would just take my drumsticks and do it on some cushions which at least it was still working on the skill so um it was it was really easy to manage for me with being able to do two of the things within skiing. <laughs> I think that is really nice because you get to do what you love and it doesn't really feel like it's an obligation to do no. it and the way you manage to incorporate it is really good actually. Yeah no I had a lot of fun with it um, and then just building up to the expedition because I've never you know never done anything like it like and that was a lot of fun just almost you know I was able just to escape skiing in a sense of go go and and into the nat nature and just take a few days just to enjoy it with friends and and go camping and it was so much fun. What made you get into skiing? Like I know you also hear like normal sports and also skiing is a normal sport but like it just doesn't, doesn't doesn't seem to be a sport that oh I'm gonna go and become like a athlete like what made you get into that? 
Um, well, I actually started uh, skiing just before I was four um, because my all my family skied. So we were uh, learned to ski so we could ski on the Scottish mountains, um, which are obviously really great. Um, but then it was down at the local dry slope in Aberdeen is where I started freestyle um, because I went to a kids club and then saw all the people doing the jump and just really was inspired by it. Um, so I just um, joined, joined the freestyle night. Um, and then kept it going from there. But I agree, it's a weird one to get into in the UK, but um, I found a pathway in and it worked and I really enjoy my sport. So yeah. Um, what about you guys? What are your favourite memories? Be like, I can't, genuinely, I have so many memories of Duke of Edinburgh and I'm not gonna lie, a lot of, Duke of Edinburgh for me was a very out of the box, out of the norm thing for me to do because I never would have thought of like camping for fun, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously there's all the walking that's involved. And yeah, like I love a good run and I do like seeing sights and stuff, but then you've got all the weights on you and stuff. So that was definitely something. So every little memory I have, there's like, cause of my team, we, it would get to the point where we're all so tired that everyone was just speaking nonsense so a lot of our chats are very memorable chats probably I can't share but um, it was just really funny and I remember doing like bronze we ended up taking the wrong route like several times and we got stuck surrounded by a bunch of sheep so we thought okay like let's do something with this then because our aim at the time was to make like a documentary of the outdoors so we kind of like you know when you do those like YouTube YouTube voiceovers of like you know cooking a recipe or something we did a voiceover of what the sheeps were doing and, and just like we just came up with the most random stuff and it was hilarious oh that's so cool <laughs> what sort of things were the sheep doing not very much, but we yeah. definitely made it seem like it was much. Um, my favourite memory would probably be once a day's done, like uh, settling down and just spending time and getting to know other different people and like sitting around, like I remember from my bronze, sat around the fire um, and just kind of always being, I feel as if when you go out in an exposition, you can meet completely different strangers. You wouldn't know them, but yet by the end of that expedition, you're like best friends. Like you know, you feel as if you know more than anything about them. And I just feel as if that was really good memories, like just sitting around telling stories, having a laugh, and just getting to know each other. I think that was like quite a good memory. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely agree. We had marshmallows right on a fire, and it was such a such a good you know experience, and and it was really nice. Yeah, to get to know everyone. I agree. It's also nice to just not actually have the chance to access technology as yeah. we would all kind of run to. I'm not even ashamed to say it, sadly, but it was great because you're just surrounded by nature. You're surrounded by one another. So you're kind of like forced to talk to each other. And then you realise like by the end of it, you know people a lot better than you would have if you hadn't gone on the expedition and even like I went with people that I've known for the first six years I've been at high school but some of the stuff that we found out about each other during Duke of Edinburgh was very shocking or just like oh like I wouldn't have thought about that or knew about that had we not been stuck together. I just have a question for the three of you how long ago was it that you started Duke of Edinburgh and how did you find out about it and what made you want to sign up for it? I was actually three years ago um so it's been a little bit of time, um, but uh, it was just through the school and the school were advertising bronze D of V. Um, so and I really I've always wanted to do it because um, I've heard about it, you know, a lot before. Um, so I just decided to sign up for it. Um, definitely best decision decision I've made in school. It was such a good experience, honestly. I'm also I we found out about it through the school, but pretty much most my like aunties and my cousins they've done it to some stage or the other and while it was never something I had really thought about when I found out about it in the school I think it was in like S3 or S4 I kind of just thought like why not type so it was like something new let me just push myself out and like it's also nice because it's it's a completely different initiative in terms of 
you don't always have access to these type of things as well, especially in school when you're kind of in the same environment. So Duke of Edinburgh kind of pushes you. And at the time, I remember thinking, like, at least maybe after this, it will force me to not be scared of new things or taking on new challenges, even though a lot of the time I was kind of dreading the fact that I would have to camp outside because I just didn't know what it would be like. But I just thought if you're with the right people and you're, you know, you've got nothing else to kind of do, it'd be a good idea. And my year was actually like my group was kind of the first ones in our school to do it in, I guess, quite a while or for as long as I'd been there. That was the first time that I was introduced. So we were kind of like the guinea pigs for the school. And then now it's completely picked up. There's loads of people in my school doing it. So it's it's nice to be the original ones. <laughs> it was probably about three or four years ago um I did start it was honestly it was through community land development it was through youth work um they were based in their school and my mum works for them and so I kind of knew like all the leaders and kind of everything and I wouldn't I wouldn't be lying if I said I didn't really have any choice I think I was kind of just told you're done Jake Edinburgh Claire um it'll be great for you you'll enjoy it you'll love it so you go to do it and I think really from that point I was like great okay but obviously I, I took my own look at it and I was like well let's see what this thing actually is and I think from there I was like no this this does sound something that was really really good I mean I'd done my bronze but I actually had an injury and I went back out and I had I got sent home like that night I ended up in crutches and a splint for like six months <laughs> um so I thought that's that's the end of it that's I'm never going to go back to do it and making that decision and having the amount of support that I had from like Gillian I wouldn't have went back to do the Duke of Edinburgh and I'm so thankful that I just enjoyed the first bronze to go back and do it. So clearly like that's amazing that you actually managed to like injure yourself but then find the motivation like to go back like it just shows how much Duke of Edinburgh can change your perspective and honestly speaking I think it's changed my perspective on a lot of things and it's not just kind of you know building skills like meeting people or you know just stepping out your comfort zone I think there's been a lot of um situations where I wouldn't have stepped forward to do something had it had I not already done Duke of Edinburgh and like put myself in a situation where in my head I'm like okay well I've done that so I can do pretty much anything else now or even just like going to the gym now I'm like I managed to walk however many um miles during Duke of Edinburgh I can do this now so it's like it's that nice little reminder like you've actually done it and you can do it I feel as if when people hear about Duke of Edinburgh they go oh that's that thing that you walk and you carry the big bags and like why do you want to sleep in the ground it's it is not that it is the complete utter opposite but obviously you do walk and you do sleep in the ground basically right but it's so much more than that. It's so much more rewarding. It's it's so interesting. And as you said, you do think after doing your kids, you do things and you're like, have I really just done that? Have I signed myself up for something that I would never ever would imagine myself doing? And it's just it's crazy how something can actually change you so much for the better. <laughs> Then took it upon myself to volunteer at Marie Curie and I was there all of summer and only let go just about two or three months ago just because of school and commitments so it was harder but I would 100% go back to volunteer somewhere else in the future and just that I really don't think I would have actually done something like that had I not had to for the Duke of Edinburgh and realise like okay I do have that time let me put it towards something good because let's face it I think we can all agree that we'd want to just kind of stay in bed watching Netflix or something and I know I would have done that 100% but it's nice to know that you're utilising your time to help out your community or just to be better in yourself and I think again without the Duke of Edinburgh I probably wouldn't have been so involved with stuff like that. Um, we're hoping to do it on the Fife Coastal Silver Path and in the Queen Elizabeth Forest. What What are you looking forward to most, Anna? Um, I think just meeting new people, trying something new, because I've never camped before, seeing all these sights. 